everybody. Thank you for joining us for another episode of What to Watch. I'm Rex Ravita. And I'm Savannah Jones. Today we have... And I'm Marky Richardson. Period. <laughs> <laughs> From the new Hulu series, Unprisoned, joining us today. So thank you so much for joining us. <laughs> Hey, thank y'all for having me. I appreciate it. Word to the wise, y'all, I'm eating. So I've said before, Karen, I'm eating some oatmeal and some pistachios. So don't even worry about the little smacking you going on. <laughs> so Unprisoned follows the journey of healing childhood wounds as a therapist and single mom, played by Carrie Washington, learns to deal with her father who has been released from prison. So can you tell us a little bit about your character, Mal, just to start off? Yeah, so Mal, I play Mal, clearly, uh, or not clearly, <laughs> but who is a, he's a criminal, uh, criminal justice social case worker. He uh, loves his job. He's one of the most secure characters on the show. Uh, and, you know, in, in therapy and terms and whatnot, his attachment style is secure. Um, he is forgiving. He's compassionate. He has a level of empathy. Um, that was unbeknownst to me when, when I started this work, when I started this show, uh, he was somebody who I didn't know that I needed to be at the moment when this, uh, uh, character and, and script came into my life because I was going through some shit in my own life as we all do. And, uh, yeah, he was somebody who I didn't know that I needed to be to get through. So, um, you know, he's cool. He's like a grounding force for the Edwin character and the Paige character Edwin played by the magnificent Delroy Lindo. Yes. And so mm -hmm. next question. So what was your experience like working with someone like Kerry Washington and Delroy Lindo? I couldn't like those two, they are legends, honestly. So I could not imagine yeah. even being on set. Like how was that for you? No, tell me about it. They are <laughs> my, my, I call them my Mount Rushmore of actors, right? I've studied these people all my life. Um, and even especially like, especially Delroy, I mean, from Malcolm X and every single thing that he's done. Um, but the first day for me working on set, like halfway through the day, there's a scene with me, Carrie and Delroy. And uh, my wife was like, before I went to work, she was like, just don't, just don't be yourself. Just wait until like episode three, until you open your mouth and start talking and, and whatnot. I'm like, I get out of here. I, I got this. So anyway, day one comes, I'm shooting the scene and I stop and I'm like, to them, carry it over. I'm like, look, I just want y'all to know, I can't pretend that this is not happening right now. And I'm freaking the boop out, you know, inside. And then I just start rambling on about how much they mean to me as artists and black people. Um, and Delroy, he's like, God bless you, brother. God bless you. Uh, and I'm like, oh, okay, thank you. <laughs> and Carrie's like, we have time. We have so much time because I'm spe I'm going crazy. But, but I don't know. You know, it's the first day, and I don't know if we'll be back. Um, but they were so gracious and so open and so giving in terms of any questions that I had. Because for me, working with them was like a master class. So I'm a sponge, I'm a student. I just soak in as much as I can, you know, where I can. And um, I told them, I'm like, look, if I start asking too much questions and y'all want me to shut up, just tell me, I'm, I'm sure you will. Uh, but they never did, <laughs> they never said no. Um, and they were, you know, I'm very grateful to have been and to be a part of this experience and to share this space with them. That's amazing. <laughs> So I know the subject of the show is heavily on uh, therapies and she's a therapist. So um, do you think that everyone should do therapy at some point in their life? Or what do you think about therapy in general? You know, I'm not a blanket statement person. I know it's helpful for me. Uh, I know it's definitely beneficial for me. I got a, I got an appointment tomorrow at two o'clock. Um, <laughs> but uh, I'm not missing that. But um yeah, I definitely think it's 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 very beneficial, and it has been beneficial uh, for me. So I would say, if anybody has any thoughts or questions about it, you know, give it a shot. See see if you like it. If you don't, I mean, there's other ways. You know, at the end of the day, I feel like this life in general is all about just uh, getting back to center and getting back to yourself. So whatever that 
whatever does that for you, uh, do that. If it's playing music, if it's exercising, if it's, you know, eating food, cooking food, if it's eating oatmeal with pistachios and pear in there, uh, you know, if it's watching comedies, whatever does that for you, do that. If it's all those things, do all those things, because I do all those things. <laughs> Yeah, for me, well, I can't necessarily afford therapy right now, but the gym is my therapy. I have to go because if not, I'll be going crazy. That's my release. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yes. And, and to, to, to speak to that too, not on your specific situation, but yeah. for also people, you know, that may not be able to afford therapy and whatnot. There are resources out there. They do exist that are free um you know government programs your, your local areas and whatnot um that there are resources that that do exist that do not cost you know we don't matter what they cost but it, there are affordable resources that that do exist so um you know shout out to the gym Shout out to the gym. <laughs> so, <laughs> Unprison addresses many topics from relationship boundaries to how Black men are treated in the prison system. So can you discuss any particular emotional or memorable scene and how you navigated them without giving away any spoilers to anybody who hasn't seen it? Sure. Well, they ain't seen it. This show been out since March 10th. I know, I know, so I know. I'm spoiling everything. <laughs> they ain't seen it. Spoil, spoil. We'll put a spoiler alert right here. <laughs> spoiler <laughs> alert. Um, let's try to see. Let, let's, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. There was a scene. Um, I was not in it, but when I watched it, it well, a couple of scenes broke my heart. But this one particular scene where uh, Edwin, the character Edwin, they they take a trip down to, I think it was uh, someplace in Mississippi. Actually, yeah. so shout out to the whole state of Mississippi. I don't remember the specific area, but he is trying to get. I think he's trying to get his birth certificate, yeah. a copy of his birth certificate, and without his birth certificate, I mean, without his, like he, without his driver's license or his social security mm -hmm. card, he could not get the birth certificate, and without the birth certificate, he couldn't get the social security card or the driver's license or something. So it was like, you know, he, he was stuck, and so uh, just that emotion that he uh, ex <laughs> expelled in that moment. Um, uh, just the frustration and the heartbreak and the the complexity and the uh, designed confinement that these institutions put on people, especially black and brown people, um, especially in the South. Um, I mean, really all over the states, but especially in these, you know, former Jim Crow <laughs> states and communities and whatnot. Um, that broke my heart. and. Um, also, you know, in preparation for this role and this show, I interviewed um, one of my friends, one of my best friends, who was basically in the same situation that Paige and Edwin are in. Um, her father had came home, I think it was like, maybe like, maybe 10 years ago, let's say it was about 10 years ago. I was there when he came, but uh, in preparation, we just sat down and we went to the spot El Torito, I don't know if y'all got those out there. Um, that's one of his favorite spots. But really just to, they let me in in a way that I had not been in before, just to witness the complexity of their relationship, but the level of forgiveness and compassion and empathy that she chose to have uh, and the level of acceptance and surrender that he chose to have in order to uh, you know, be reacclimated into the family and, and because there were other family members justified for so that, you know, decided not to make that that choice in terms of forgiveness and whatnot and, you know, justifiably so. Um, but it was so eerie, uh, just the, like the exact similar situation with, with being so specific, but similar and universal at the same time. Because even as we're out doing press and talking with people uh, right now, everybody is saying, oh, this is my story. Oh, my mom was incarcerated. My father was incarcerated. Both my parents were incarcerated. Or my, my brother and my sister, like everybody, there's nobody in the States that has not been affected by incarceration. <laughs> Whether you choose to ignore it, or you're actually in the system and like there's there's nobody who's, who has not been affected by this. So um, I've just been pleasantly surprised at the reception of the show, how it's been received. So 
That's interesting that you say that. Me and Savannah were just talking before the show. And I asked, like, should I bring this up? Because I do relate to this story in a way. Both my parents were incarcerated as a child. And then my dad was incarcerated for years yeah. and then came home. So it's interesting to see, you know, this sort of story from that angle rather than the angles that we're used to. And I definitely agree that so many people are affected by incarceration and just, you know, everyone has a criminal record, not everyone, but a lot of people in America. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's interesting to see how to navigate those sort of things when you get home and how when they get home, it was just very weird to live in real life. So to see it on the screen is interesting as well. So do you have any yeah. stories yourself from your personal life to pull from when playing a role like this? And then two part question, what was the most rewarding part in playing a character like that? Yeah. Uh, well, first, I'm glad that you, you know, said that. I'm glad that you shared that. Because um, every time that I hear it, it really just, I don't know, it just brings me back to center uh, in regards to <sighs> revealing to me why I do what I do and what we do, uh, you know, what our intention was with the show. And shout out to Tracy, whose actual experience this is. I mean, every detail is not... Uh, autobiographical, but this is her father. This is her mother. This is this is her story. This is her heart. So uh, I appreciate you for sharing that. Um, so thank you. Um, from my personal life, uh, my you know my best friend. She's the one uh, that, that I've been closest to in regards to you know people coming home, and I'm, I mean, I've had family members locked up here and there and whatnot. So um, who hasn't? Um, uh, as far as like personal life, I'm also working with this organization called the Juvenile Law Center, which is a national organization based in Philly um, that advocates for the uh, the rights of children in the system and in the welfare system. So we've been doing a lot of work um, since working on the show, and even that kind of just uh, came out of. I wouldn't say I wouldn't say it was a coincidence, but. Uh, uh, all these little nuggets like in my life have aligned to this very moment. So a lot of times when I work on a project, uh, different, you know, I, I, I do a lot of service work. So um, different things start aligning with the, the life and art for me is <laughs> it's all the same for the most part. They each uh, feel each other. So um, as far as what was the most rewarding experience i guess for me was um you know i was going through some stuff in my life and uh i again just through malcolm's uh secureness as far as his attachment style in terms of his level of forgiveness and acceptance of like meeting people where they are um that taught me so much into you know me reestablishing a relationship with my father and um that was a this this story and this work and script was like the catalyst for me reconnecting with my father after not having seen each other for like three years or something like that wow yeah yeah so um that was one of the most that was the most rewarding experience uh I, i'd say for me to um get reacquainted or get reconnected or reconnected and start that path of uh, uh, what do you call it? I guess healing uh, the broken um, connection. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So, so stepping into this role was sort of like therapy for you too. Then. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. 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 Yeah. Playing somebody secure helped you to be more secure in your real life. So I feel like that was the best role to take. Like, that's great. Look, <laughs> yeah. And, and it's crazy because it was like a year and a half because I was working on a, a different show called Dear White People. And that was a whole different kind of character with that. So, um, but even with that role and that story, I mean, that taught me, you know, that art can and should be activism um, and how to stand up for myself and how to, uh, protest just like being myself or just doing you know what i know to do to protest at my own frequency so and of course that was you know we had a bunch of shit going on that was the 2020 and the 2016 and i mean yes. that originally as a film and we were we shot that in 2013 um 
in Minneapolis, which this um, prison story takes place in Minneapolis. So all these different, you know, like oh, it, it all just back comes back, back together. <laughs> it comes back together. But it was oh. a year and a half. Hmm? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> oh no, no. It, it was a year and a half between when I finished the white people and then started working on a prison. But in that mm-hmm. in that time span, uh, I was saying no to a lot of different projects and getting frustrated at mm-hmm. just you know this shit is crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, but for me, I, I I was like, okay, I just want to work with people that I love, appreciate, admire, respect, and I want to do you know something that says something. Um, for me, every project, every script doesn't have to be, you know, oh, you got me, do this, do that, do that, do that. But it turns out a lot of the things that I've done have that, you know, whether it's heavier or it's, um, it's got that little, that thing that to it. So, <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I'm not mad at that, but um, yeah, all the things are learned. So. Yeah. So just like how you kind of got some free therapy and some inner healing from the show, What do you hope the viewers will take from this once they watch it? I hope they take whatever they want, (laughs) whatever they need from it. Um, I know for myself, because the show is so, in my opinion, it's so vast, it's multi-generational, it touches on a lot of different things in a lot of different ways. to me, it's, it's funny, it's sexy, it's provocative, it's light, it's heavy, it's, you know, it's complex, it's life. It's a reflection of life and a reflection of the complexity of humanity. So um, I think there's a lot for people to take from it. And I just hope that they take whatever they want, whatever they get. I know what I've gotten from it is, again, just this idea of getting free, getting free from anything and everything that um, feel, you feel like, you know, that, okay, not you, that I feel like, you know, holds me back, which at the end of the day is only myself. So getting free from myself or any thoughts or anything that I think is uh, uh, confining who I am or who I want to be. So freedom is what I've gotten from it. Freedom. To freedom! Nicki Minaj. To freedom! To freedom! <laughs> Why do we always I wish have I had the uh, cool soundboard? I wish show. I had like the bomb drop. <laughs> to <sound>. freedom! Boom, boom, boom! Oh my goodness. So, we, to end off the interview, we just want to. Ending? Oh, you think, you want to talk some more? <laughs> <laughs> I thought this was the Bobby Walters Oprah. Uh, Super Soul 45 minutes into 65 minutes special. I'm so sorry, it's not that long. I, I wish, right? Okay. I know, Next dang. Okay. Uh, wait. but for this, we want to end it out with a speed round, just kind of throw some questions at you. You can answer it kind of quick, and yeah, okay. that's how we're gonna end it out. So, to start, like you really just already mentioned. So what character is more like you in real life? Your character Reggie from Dear White People or <laughs> my prison? Well, they were each like me at the time I was doing them. So I don't know what that says about me. It was crazy. <laughs> yeah, back in the so. few years ago. <laughs> so right now, my okay. so Reggie still pops up every now and then. Okay. Papa Cat. Oh, Cap. Lord. Papa Cat. Papa Cat. I don't know who that was. Anyway. <laughs> so besides Kerry Washington, obviously, who is your dream co-star? Who would you want to work with in any production? Oh. Dead or alive, or they got to be alive? They could be dead. Let's say Maya Angelou. <laughs> because she did everything. You didn't ask. She did it. She, I mean, she did everything. Uh, and I just love her voice. I love the way she talks, you know, or talked. I still hear her in my head. Okay. We've never met, clearly, Dr. Maya Angelou. So. That's interesting, though. I wouldn't expect the, for you to say a poet. I mean, what she did, do some acting. You know, she did some acting work, but that's interesting. That's a different person that I wouldn't have ever even thought to even. Yeah. <laughs> she did. I already asked her You just like her as your apartment. <laughs> <laughs> I, man, she's in my she's in my head. 
That's another character you got up there. So if you could have a career other than acting, what would it be? Astronaut. Nice. I wanted to be an astronaut. (laughs) You too? Yeah, I'm like big into space. He loves space. Yeah, me too. Space is cool as shit. I have a book that says space is cool as fuck on my uh on the coffee table out there. Rex, show uh, me a telescope, Rex. <laughs> you have to use show telescopes. <laughs> oh, you got one? We saw a telescope. Oh there's a little, there's a little uh, I got a little something in there. I mean I bought it for as a gift for my wife, but she don't use it, so yeah, it's you bought it for yourself, that's why. <laughs> I bought it for myself. <laughs> Yeah. So if you could describe Unprisoned in three words, this is our final little trivia question, yeah. then what would they be? In three words? Yeah. I can't count, but I'm going to say um, Carrie and Delroy. That's it. Period. Period. That's perfect. I was thinking freedom, carry Washington. <laughs> we in the same spectrum. We in the same. We, we here. We there. We there.